Hey, so we are talking about all of the things that uh, any of us needs to do in order to become a master, right? So his mind, the master's mind, his mind is like the deep water that is calm and peaceful. All right, so they're giving us this metaphor, this beautiful metaphor of the mind being like deep, uh, like the deep, calm, peaceful ocean. All right, and that's a beautiful metaphor. That's a beautiful metaphor. And also, they, that's basically what they are telling us about the master, that a real master is someone that, that has a mind that is very deep and calm and peaceful. And that's the point that we will reach uh, at some levels, uh, at some level, at some point of consciousness, right? Obviously, I think it's a safe assumption to say that you probably don't have such a peaceful and calm mind, although maybe you do, I don't know you personally, but I think most of us are in that state of being in uh, this world, 3D world, so it's very hard to have a calm, peaceful mind all the time with all this craziness going around you, right? But if you go outside to like nature and stuff like that, like the masters usually do, so you can be of a very, very calm mind, and obviously if you are such in such a high level, maybe you can even in major city do it but i think it's it's very hard like the master most masters uh, are usually uh, scattered in those places of low uh, population and nature and stuff like that because it's much easier to stay very high in consciousness in those kind of places and so the mind is peaceful the heart is kind like what like water that benefits all the heart is kind like the water that benefits all, all right? So the water benefits all. This is the second time that we are noticing the Tao telling, uh, telling us that the water benefits all. And if you notice how the Tao is so simple and beautiful and short, you notice that. And also if the Tao chooses to say something twice, so I mean, it's probably very, very deep and very, very important that you realize that at the end of the day, that's the big one big secret that you need to benefit all to be altruistic and help others and that's the fastest route to becoming a, on a very very high consciousness level just helping others and we see that in many places i mean the masters of business are people that are thinking in the mindset of helping others the masters of religion the masters of everything and I'm talking about the original masters or some masters. Obviously, some masters in business are not that kind. And some uh, masters in religion are not that of a uh, kind heart. But, you know, anyway, that's what it should be at least, right? <laughs> that people that are in control should be also great masters. That's the point. The masters of a, a master of business would be a person that created a huge company single-handedly. And this person would be of a kind-hearted, uh, kind-hearted uh, heart, like water. And this type of person would create a great company. And if you read about those types of business masters, it's always the case. But people that are in control today, maybe their children, whatever, not the people that are really the, the great masters of business themselves, these people are not necessarily of an altruistic nature, not at all. And it's the same in religion, and it's the same phenomena again and again throughout history of great masters coming, doing something awesome, and then, you know, other people screwing it over. But I'm getting carried away. Uh, we talked about the mind, we talked about the heart. His words are sincere, like the constant flow of water. It's The words are sincere. This is also the second time in... Uh, Throughout the book, we already see for the second time that they are talking about uh, this idea of telling the truth. And it's so important that they even put it here. Here, This is, I think, a very important chapter that we get here. A very, very deep and important chapter. This sort of chapter I would, like, stamp on a wall or something. Because they're basically telling us what to do. This is, like, a very, very obvious guidance of how to become a great master. And if you be a person of calm, calm mind, you will become more and more peaceful and become a great master. If you will have a kind, a heart that is kind, you will be on a path to becoming a great master. If your words will be a words of truth, you are on a path to becoming a great master. 
So you see it's a one path, the, the Tao is one and only, and yet it is infinite. This is the beauty of the absolute. You see this contradiction, and yet it's not a contradiction, and that's the beauty of the Tao. It's the place that all contradictions unite into one. Anyway, the words, his governing is natural without desire. It's very beautiful that they choose to put this idea of how to be a leader, how to be a governor, how to be the person in control. They choose to put it here in this important chapter and it's lovely. Look what they say about the people that, how, that are in control of others and how they should be ever, behave. If you as a master will become a, a leader or is a leader, his governing is natural without desire which is like the softness of water that penetrates through hard rocks. All right, so indeed beautiful things are being said here. It's beautiful. The water penetra penetrates without, without any struggle through hard rocks. You see how as a leader sometimes you need to penetrate through hard rocks and see how water does it. With, with a softness. This is so beautiful. It's like the way you need to penetrate hard rocks, the way you need to the way you need to, to work in order to achieve your desires and penetrate through hard struggles is with softness, just like water. It's natural. The governing is natural and without desire and this is being compared to this softness of water that penetrates rocks even so they're basically giving you a very very strict and very obvious path they are telling you listen your governing should be natural and without desire once you put your own desire into governing you already walked away from the path if you are a leader, if you are a person of control, the Tao tells you, remove your own personal desires because this doesn't serve you in this path of greatness and of reaching high consciousness. Doesn't serve you. That's not the way we talked about the masters of business, etc. So that's not the way that a master of business behaves. The real masters, the people that actually create the huge companies. And obviously I'm not talking about uh, commerce only. I just assume that it would be something that most of you will feel, or some of you will feel uh, related to. But obviously it could be in any place, in military, in government, in uh, commerce, in whatever is your line of, uh, of career and whatever, whatever your job is currently. Whatever you are doing, you can always implement the Tao, whether you have people beneath you uh, through the hierarchy of your, your workplace and you are considered to be a manager or something like that, or maybe it's something in whatever nature it is, whether it exists or not, you are still a great master and a great teacher just by personal example, just by following yourself uh, through the Tao, you already been a great teacher and great, uh, great leader of others and that's why it's important that they give us this guidance because all of us are leaders if we choose to, to follow the path. All of us. The mere fact that you are watching this, this video already makes you a leader to let's say your little child that walks by and sees you and see that you watch this video as an example. This is already you are a leader to this child just as an example. Obviously, every parent has this concept of controlling others. Obviously, it goes without saying. His work is of talent, like the free flow of water. The work is of talent. Mm. His movement is of right timing, like water that flows smoothly. Movement in the right timing. So I think this sentence is important about this whole idea of conflict. Because, obviously, especially for people that are of power, but even people without any power, you know, 
everyone has some power on others and especially on oneself and the work should be of talent and the movement needs to be in right timing all right so do your work in talent and move in right timing do whatever uh, you need to to do in the right timing if you have conflict you know it's the the people of low consciousness that what they choose to do in conflict is immediately explode and lose themselves in this craziness of emotion that goes with conflict because conflict does provide you with many tests right this is testing you as a master you know all of a sudden you have this conflict and now you are very much tempted to lose yourself in the craziness of 3d reality but the thing is that even this conflict with other people with the government with some whatever entity is all in 3d in the higher dimensions there are no conflicts in the very high dimensions <laughs> Some people talk about the conflicts of lower dimensions, for example, war between wars between angels and demons. There are all kinds of themes like that that talk about conflicts in a higher dimension. And I don't know, I guess any one of us can choose whatever to believe, if he chooses to believe that or not. But the question is those are are those myths are are really in tune with what the Tao is trying to tell us because I don't see these sort of myths being written in the Tao so just saying a virtuous person never forces his way and hence will not make faults again through conflicts you know sometimes you are the one that are triggering the conflicts which is crazy because we are trying all the time to stay away from conflicts in the Tao and you are the one that creates them so obviously if you are that sort of person and sometimes you need to be but to just realize that when you are doing it you are stepping away from the Tao because the Tao is telling us that a virtuous person never forces his way and you should not do it force it you know in a, like an aggressive manner you obviously you affect others in a thousand different ways throughout the day but Forcing yourself too aggressively is probably not walking the path. A beautiful chapter, chapter 8.